Welcome. This is the Algebra 1 end of course practice test number 3, question number 63. The question says, what is the simplified form of the square root of 625x to the 4th over 169 minus the square root of 144x to the 4th over 676 for all x greater than or equal to 0? Um, so no negatives because you don't want to have imaginary numbers here. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is sort of look at the numbers separately from the variable and exponent term and I'll get into why I have the order of operations over here in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is look at each one of the numbers separately. So I'm going to take the square root of them. But reality is, I can look at the square root of 625, which is easy to calculate, but I'm going to make a point about the next thing in a second, so it's important to do it. I can look at it as 625 raised to the one-half power because the second power would be um, essentially taking, okay, what number, if I multiply 625 times itself, that would be 625 times 625 or 625 squared. If I want to sort of contract that situation and do, well, what two numbers do I have to multiply to get 625, I mean, what two numbers by them? what number by itself do I have to multiply, then I would do the square root or multiply by one half. So I'm sort of contracting that relationship. I end up with a 25 incidentally enough. Same thing here. I could raise 169 to the one half power and get 13. 144 to the one half power is 12 and 676 uh, to the one half power is 26. So my answer starts to form a little bit with 25 over 13 minus 12 over 26. Now, from here, uh, I have to think about, well, what about this? Uh, same thing here. I can look at it as x to the fourth power raised to the one half power. Now, the easy thing to do here would might be, you know, well, I'm just going to raise four to the half power and see what that does and get that, put that on x. But that's not how it works. That's why I drew the little um, order of operations over here. With order of operations, you do parentheses first and then exponents, which is what we've sort of been doing with these. We've been raising them to a power. If you already have an exponent in place, like as with an x to the fourth. The only thing I can do with the x to the fourth, because it's already an exponent, is one less operation on the order of operations. It's sort of like I throw out an exponent, but the best I can hope for to do any actual interaction with it, because it's so much more important, is that it multiplies. So really, I need to think of this as x to the fourth, and it's four times one half, which is, of course, x to the second power. Uh, it's sort of like, a square root is sort of like saying, how many groups of two do you have if you have an exponent? So if it's x to the sixth, there's three groups of two, so I could pull out x to the third power. So I'm going to tag on that x to the second power here and here. Uh, from here, I just need to do a subtraction. I need a common denominator. That's like, you know, fifth grade stuff now, or probably even younger at this point. I need to multiply everything by two, so the top and the bottom, so I end up with 50 x squared over 26 minus 12 x squared over 26. These are like terms. They have a common denominator. So I do 50 minus 12, which is 38 x squared over 26. Not quite done because 2 can come out of both of these two. So to reduce my fraction down, I end up getting 19 over 13. And I've got that x squared on there. So 19 x squared over 13. There you go. It's perfectly fine. Could you get this answer uh, if you have a graphing calculator without that much thought? Probably. You could probably do it without much thought anyway. I just want it to be thorough. So I'm going to sort of clear out all the stuff that I wrote and delete and do this. You can see where I've been trying to make all the videos. But anyway, because there's only one variable in it, uh, the graphing calculator matches or makes a variable. And if you have x equals 0, it doesn't work. So if you clicked x, you get 0, it doesn't work. Go into y equals and uh, type in something that's linear, so anything with x in it, not x squared or whatever. You'll get whatever the value, the absolute value of whatever your x min and x max are. So if I set x minimum at negative 5 and the x max at 5, and then I graph something with x in it, my x value would be 5. But I like 10, so I'm going to stick with it and it is 10 as you can see. So now I can just type this all in. So I hit the square root 
and I'm going to go up into my fraction menu and just type in exactly what it says, 625 x to the fourth. If this had been d to the fourth and it was d all the way through, I could still use the x. That's the one you want to use. You don't want to go down into these uh, texting things except for the y, but that's a whole other situation. So you can see it's all in exactly, and then I just need to get out of it. Minus, and once again, I need to make a fraction. 144 x to the fourth. Make sure you're clicking out of all the stuff, otherwise it'll mess up. And then 676, and you might want to click all the way out of that one too. It takes two. Hit enter, and you'll get 146.1538. So I'm going to try to get that answer for one of my answer choices. So I'm going to type in the one that I think the actual answer is. So 19x squared over 13. And if I convert that into a decimal, which I forgot to do, I don't know why, you see it matches exactly. Now if I did x squared over 2 and turn that into a decimal, doesn't match. So that's all I can do. Uh, that's another way you can get the answer if you can't do the other part. But really you should learn how to get the answer the normal math way, but that's there if you need it.